Yeah, it's definitely something that needs the blinds pulled up, the curtain pulled back, the lid removed, and we need to look at it. Just in case you might um, be feeling some of the same things. We're around the same age. I'm 57, very soon to be 58 in a couple weeks. I have been in menopause for a long time. I can't tell you exactly. I don't even, I don't remember when it first started because I've been having other health issues and I just, I can't remember a really long time. But the real reason that I'm having this big breakthrough today is because I'm realizing that this whole time there's been a connection with a lot of my symptoms that I've been investigating other avenues other than menopause. For example, my restless leg syndrome. Maybe I thought it was somehow connected to my scoliosis, but not menopause, not menopause. And it is. And it's been so extreme lately. Welcome to Lauren's self-love studio, empowering you, a young at heart friend, to embrace self-love, shift your mindset, and create the life you feel aligned with. The nights have been awful. I probably have not gotten more than four hours a night in a while. And the major reason is I get the, I get really severe night sweats and I wake up like I walked through a car wash and basically completely have to change. So I just end up getting ready for the day. I can't get all like, you know, washed up and get back in bed at that point. And I'm too awake after that. And also the bed soaked. So it's, they're really, really bad. And so all these, all these things, and there's other, you know, they, they talked about mood swings and, um, oh, here's another one, chills. I get the chills so easily when no one else is cold. They, they talked about the chills being part of um, hot flash. So hot flashes, you know, that's one. And that was always like the big one that everybody thought of when they said the word menopause. You would think, oh, hot flashes, you know. And I think add bloating to that yeah. hormone replacement therapy is not as dangerous as they had thought it to be. And it really, um, I think it really is, it depends, you know, on an individual basis, non HRT options out there now, because it's, I think it's, it's getting more publicity it's getting more attention I know this particular doctor she now just she dedicates her practice strictly to menopause she has people flying in from all over to see her she is a wealth of information about menopause and I just can't believe I I mean I can believe because it's not really talked that much about and I, she was saying even when she went to med school, there was maybe six hours in the whole four years that they devoted to menopause. Yeah, it's so, definitely uh, something that needs the blinds pulled up, the curtain pulled back, the lid removed, and we need to look at it and give it the credit that it needs because so many women are suffering and maybe you know, given a couple different things to try. And after that, it's, it gets really frustrating when you're trying to get to the bottom uh, of why you're feeling a certain way right? and nothing's coming up in your blood work or your x-ray or your MRI. And, um, you know, you go to different doctors and every time you go, you think, oh, this is this is going to be the one and you wait and wait for the doctor to come in the room and you, 
you think you're going to go home with all these answers only to find another, we don't know, it might be this, and maybe you start treatment for something else. And it ends up that it's, it could be menopause. And I personally have been on this road without even knowing it. Now that we know what we're feeling is real. And since this is something that is inevitable to help prevent additional symptoms, maybe there's some things we can do to help our body better prepare for what's ahead with menopause. Before starting a new way of eating or a new form of exercise, it's a great idea to have an appointment with your physician just to establish a baseline. See where you are as far as your estrogen. I had been suspecting for a long time that my symptoms were mostly being caused by menopause. The last time I had blood work, I asked if they could check and see where I am. It showed the level of estrogen, a concrete answer about that. And there are some things that Dr. Haver had suggested that would help tremendously So I want to share those with you because I know personally, I have started them from a while ago. I have a feeling that some of these changes that I'd already made are probably helping with the fact that I'm getting four hours of sleep a night, which is not enough because I've been implementing these other healthier habits. It's probably helping. But I do need to change that sleep amount. There's no way that that could last forever. Some of the other things are, I'll start with the biggest one, and that's nutrition. She she spoke adamantly about even if you were to do an HRT, hormone replacement therapy, your nutrition still needs to be top notch. And that will affect how you feel in general. Menopause or no menopause. How we eat has so much to do with how we feel. I know when we were younger, it didn't seem to make a big noticeable, at least for me, it didn't make a big noticeable difference. I was definitely someone that could eat and I really didn't have a big interest in food. I enjoyed food, but I wasn't um, like I wasn't all about it and I really didn't care that much about it. However, now I definitely see a change in my body composition and the way my weight is distributed is moving towards the middle section of my body, which is very common, you might be finding the same thing. So this is something we can actually help. And one of the ways is by making sure we're eating the right things. So if you think about it, I know it's a little bit of a pain. If we are careful about what we eat, which once we get started with it, it's really not that hard to do. We will notice that we're feeling better. And I think that will help it. It will help motivate us to continue to make those better food choices. I know it's easier to make unhealthy food choices. It just is. It's also less expensive. This is a commitment to ourself for our health and our longevity. This is a commitment we're making to ourself out of self-love. Here in this self-love studio, we are deciding and talking about the best way to love ourself. And the first way in this scenario for us gals that are 
well into menopause, we need to start with the way we're eating. I'm not saying you can't ever have a sweet treat. You know, if you're someone with a sweet tooth, I definitely am. Um, But, you know, I'm not saying to never have a piece of birthday cake or anything like that. Um, And I also feel it includes some chocolate a little bit, you know, the dark, unsweetened kind. So nutrition. So you, you can't really follow the other healthy suggestions that come after nutrition and then just leave your nutrition untouched. That will not work. Even if you go on hormone replacement therapy, it's been stressed that it can't be the only line of defense. It has to be accompanied by something like eating better and having better habits. So that leads me to the next suggestion that Dr. Haver talks a lot about the importance of exercise. And not only exercise, because for so many years, it was thought to count calories, exercise to burn the calories that we have taken in and weight bearing exercises really, really help this category of women that are in these ages of menopause. It's not only enough to do some type of aerobic activity, which could include walking. You don't have to do a step class, you know, It can be something you enjoy, dancing even, something that keeps your heart rate going, but also needs to include some form of weights and weight lifting. And she did say not the super light weights. So this is something that is best to talk to a trainer or someone, an employee at a gym, someone that is more knowledgeable in this area that could really guide you with setting up a program that you could even do at home if you wanted when it's convenient for you. So that's another strong element of maintaining feeling good during menopause, keeping those workouts regular and including a weightlifting element to it, not just aerobic. Dr. Havel also talked about the importance of supplements. However, food would be your first choice. That would be the first source to use in order to get a a nutrient. If, however, for some reason, you're not getting a nutrient, from the foods that you're eating, that would be reason to look into your supplemental option as long as you use a reputable brand because supplements are not regulated. As far as I know, they're still not regulated. So you want to be careful and you want to make sure that you're taking a good, strong supplement, reputable and is known and proven to work from a trustworthy source. The best way to get the vitamin is from the source, is the food. And if you can't have the food, then you want to find it in the supplement, and it needs to be a reputable supplement. Stress. So it's easy to say, Less stress, please. But stress is something that happens. It's your reaction to the stress that is flexible, that that we have control over. So the stress is going to happen, right? And that's out of our control. But the way we handle the stress 
that will determine the demand on our body. So if we can practice other forms that promote better coping mechanisms to stress, for example, implementing a meditation practice, and you can implement it slowly, you know, once a week, then twice a week, then three times a week, and start with short meditation sessions. Make yourself a special spot that is just for meditating. And that will let you go into your meditation quicker and easier every time because that space is designated just for meditating. Sleeping better will help as well. And that's also something we know that is greatly affected by menopause symptoms. Once you are getting that better sleep, it will help you to handle stress better. So a lot of these things kind of go hand in hand and help each other, which is good. Um, so your lifestyle choices help a lot. And when you go through life every day and you have choices to make, Try, and this comes with practice, um, to be gentle with yourself. As you're making decisions, try and think what would feel best to you. What choice should you make in that scenario that you know would best serve you when you have a choice? So, things that are in your control, those are what you want to consider what would be, what would feel best to you and helping you to remain calm. Again, with practice, these things will come easier. Nothing is going to happen overnight, but it doesn't have to take that long but it won't happen at all if you don't start to make the changes. There's lots and lots of ways, more than I even mentioned, to get proactive with living with menopause. And it does not have to mean that you're going to feel like you're deteriorating for the rest of your life. We now know that it doesn't have to feel that way. Let's put our minds and our energy together and help each other with what's working and feel stronger and more in control of how we feel. Allow this next chapter of our life to be fulfilling and full of love and good energy. And with this radiance that comes from within and a love for life when we wake up in the morning until we put our head on our pillow. I hope this video has given you some good ideas and information about menopause. And if you have any other questions or you want to see a video on another uh, menopause topic or something else having to do with being over 50, please let me know down in the comments. I read all the comments and I will get back to you. Thanks so much for being here. I love you. Namaste.